Tessa from Mama's Geeky here. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. I'm Tessa. Oh, I always forget that they added this thing. Oh, All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tessa with Mama's Geeky, and this is Lori and Ivy. We just watched the first 30 minutes and we are obsessed. And like I said, we're left on this massive cliffhanger now and it's killing us, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, we can't wait for it to come out. And I can't wait for people to see it. It's so cute. Thank you. Um, but the girls have some questions for you. So why don't you go ahead, Lori? Where did you get your inspiration? Inspiration. Inspiration. Yes. Well, <laughs> Bizarrely from a butterfly, but in a weird way, because the producer of this movie, Greg Lessons, he actually came up with the original idea because he took his children to see the opening of the new butterfly enclosure at the Natural History Museum. And when they got there, the kids weren't interested at all in the butterflies. All they wanted to do was go and look at the snakes and the spiders and all the, you know, the creepy crawly, the lizards and stuff. So he thought, wouldn't it be cool to make a film where these guys are the heroes? And from that, we, he talked to me about it. And then we thought, well, Australia's a great country to make that kind of movie. Because as you probably know, Australia's got like super cute, beautiful animals like koalas and kangaroos but it's also got some of the deadliest, strangest looking creatures on the planet. And they're generally regarded, people get a bit scared of them and, and unfairly because actually a lot of these creatures are very shy and kind and misunderstood. So we thought, why don't we make a movie where the deadly creepy crawlies are actually the good guys and get to see them for who they really are. So that's where, that was the inspiration. I love it, I love that idea. Go ahead, honey. This is a great cast. Can you guys talk about bringing them all? Yeah, I mean, we, we uh, what we do is we make, we designed the characters first uh, with our character designer, Jesse Acklin. And we then found performances that these actors had done before. And we put them up against the images uh, to see how they sounded. We also knew it was a big ensemble of who's who of mostly Australian um, actors. Um, and we made sure that they didn't, you know, you, they had real distinct voices. So, um, you know, Isla was just wonderful as Maddie. She came in and she added her own, you know, take on certain things that made it into the movie and made it even funnier because she has such great comic timing and she's got like a beautiful, rich voice. Um, Tim was, you know, it, this is a movie about perceptions and you think this is going to be the most beautiful koala in the world that's probably going to open his mouth and say beautiful things. And Tim has this kind of fun humor that's sort of snarky one-liners that was perfect for um, Pretty Boy. So as we kind of built out our cast, we found more and more voices that were very unusual for, you know, certainly uh, audiences here to hear some of those great Australian voices and accents that are, are just like really, really rich and beautiful to listen mm. to. Yeah, we wanted to keep it very authentic with the Australian animals, with using the Australian actors and their voices. Yeah. It's perfect as they, they feel so perfectly cast too. And they're yeah. all so great. I was looking at the cast list and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like everybody this is so good. So they're <laughs> even more excited to watch it. Very great. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> How did you choose your animals? Well, we chose mm. the animals particularly, well, first of all, we started with our snake and we wanted to choose, we wanted two extremes. The koala being the most beautiful creature, regarded as the most beautiful creature in Australia. So we went, what's the other side of this? What's the, what animal is regarded? What animal scares people the most? What is the most deadly poisonous animal on the planet? And it is a taipan snake. And that's what we wanted to go with for Maddie to show these two extremes. If these two extremes who are so different, if they can overcome their differences and become friends, then it's like anyone can, you know? But also the thing about taipan snakes is, even though they have this deadly poison, no one's ever died from a taipan snake bite. And the reason for that is they're incredibly shy and actually rather gentle creatures. They just got very loaded fangs. They got a lot of poison, and it's, um, but it doesn't make them evil. It doesn't make them horrible. It just, that's the way nature, nature make, make them. And um, we actually say later on in the movie, those fangs that Maddie feels ashamed about in the beginning, 
they they actually end up helping save the day towards the, you know the end. Oh, spoiler! Other. Spoiler! <laughs> well, we're not saying how, but <laughs> it, it's about it's this a film about celebrating what is special about you, not hiding away from yes. it, not being ashamed of it, but actually going, "I've got fangs. I, that's cool. I'm a snake. I love it." Oh, I and love also that. like you know. Uh, one of my favorite characters is uh, Zoe, the thorny devil lizard. They're very unusual. You don't see them, you know, and so it's also, you know, piques some curiosity about animals that you wouldn't see very often by these animals that were chosen for this yeah. movie. It's great. We were just, we were having fun with it. And the spider, when the spider goes out and starts doing that mating call, I was like, this is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I love which, that dance. Which they Take actually do. They do. They do that? The I'm sure do they that. do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right? The craziest thing. Yeah, it does a little, you know. So we had a lot of fun with choosing the animals. That's so much fun. Go ahead, honey. Are there any any challenges that the pandemic created? Well, it was very similar. We were very much similar to our animals. We were uh, in little boxes, little Zoom boxes at home. <laughs> so, yeah, we did make the movie during the pandemic. And it was a challenge, but uh, we were very fortunate that we could keep going doing that. We had our animators all around the world and in um, mostly in Canada and in um, Dallas, but we were able to keep in touch with them in the same way we're talking to you now. And we were very fortunate that we could do that. We all became a little, you know, a little, a little team of, of uh, keeping ourselves going by making this movie mm. and uh it did feel like ironically we were very similar to all the animals in our little boxes that are hoping to get out into the world um mm. soon <laughs> yes or oh, back to the outback or back to the there you go Lori. Okay. <laughs> how did the cast get in crew improvise <laughs> improvise when i say him through <laughs> Improvise. Well, they did a lot of improvising because they don't do the animation until they have the actors' voices. So although we create the characters, the design and the models and everything, they're all standing by, but the animators won't actually animate the scene until we have the recording of the actor. So the actor, and I've got the script and they can do all the lines. And then we tend to let them just say, just how would you say that in your own words or throw in anything you like and they came up with great lines and funny stuff and physical stuff and all of that ends up the animators take that they listen to that sometimes they see the recorded recordings of the actors doing it and they can put all that into the animation they can create the animation around the actors uh, voices awesome i love it now this one this is a question she's been dot since the koala opened his mouth she needed <laughs> to ask this question huh how did the idea of the koala being mean come about? <laughs> it, it is that idea that you don't expect to do you. You think he's going to, and we did, we were very careful to not have him say anything for quite some time so that when he does, um, you know, start to speak, you go, oh dear, this is not what I was expecting. And it is, uh, you know, it's a kind of take on celebrity culture, this poor uh, koala. He's been pampered. He's had everything uh, given to him and he's got a 24 hour camera on him. So it is that idea that he uh, he's he's very privileged and he's, you know, breaking. He needs to break out and, you know, go on this journey to change and to learn about other people and to to kind of get empathy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. to learn that the Australian guy is very mean. <laughs> he's a very good guy. He is, but he's not. He's, he is. He's not a. He's not a good guy. You know. He's not nice to those animals. Uh, he does change as the film goes on, and um, and we and the thing that I like, the only thing that's good about him in the beginning, I guess, is that he does love his son very much, and he's struggling to do what he thinks is right by his kid. But the thing is, he's teaching his kid all the wrong lessons which is you got to be tough and you got to hit the other guy before they hit you. You know, he's not teaching his kid that actually it's about kindness and understanding and compassion that you, you, you know, you get to know other creatures, but he does change along the way. So uh, you'll get. Oh, good. He's also and not pretending to kill wolves. Right. He pretends you're right. He's <laughs> I know. Like, I know. Was... And he is pretend. Yes. <laughs> he hasn't killed any real wolves. I promise. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> How was it like improv? 
working with Netflix. It was great. Yeah. They were very, very supportive of us. I mean, we're both first time directors. I come from an editing background. Harry comes from a writing background. And they were incredibly supportive um, of us. They gave us, a, you know, minimal notes uh, as we went through this process and really just uh, very, very supportive of the story, uh, champions to making it the best it can be. And uh, we had a great experience with Netflix. Yeah, they were terrific, really great. And being on a platform like that that goes out to 190 countries, it's amazing that they will all see these animals, see this country, you know, and all these different parts of the world is really cool. That's so cool, isn't it? Like, just to think you're going to be on Netflix, like where yeah. literally everybody can watch this. Yeah, like some little kid in Finland's waking up going, what is that little yeah. lizard and where is he? You know, it's really cool. It's, uh, it's, it's great. It's yeah. so cool. Go ahead, honey. What do you want families to take away from this? Oh, a big, big laugh and a big smile on your face. It's been a rough year and a half. And, uh, you know, especially for moms, I totally, totally <laughs> sympathise. My wife has been with the kids and homeschooling and everything. And it's about time everyone saw something mm -hmm. that was fun and lovely. But also, you know, hopefully take away a message about what it is to to not judge others but just by the way they look but really to see beyond that to look into their hearts to always approach people with an open heart and an open mind and you know and we can change the world and make it a nicer place but mainly to have a very nice fun into the year yeah and just you know everyone it, it's a family moving uh, hopefully it's coming out in december so uh, hopefully the families are at home and and they can you know enjoy it and uh yeah. It really, you know, our, our characters, they, they go on a journey and uh, home is where the heart is. You know, they, yeah. uh, they realize that their family is the people they're traveling with. So it's, it's got so many nice messages that we hope everyone enjoys. Oh, I'm so looking forward to seeing the rest of it. And then <laughs> our last question, we have a, someone who talked to you earlier and she told us something. What did she tell us? We heard that there is a special way to eat a Tim Tam. I love those. It, yes. Okay. So this is an Australian tradition. So until you can go to Australia, you can do this and pretend to practice. It's called the Tim Tam suck. And you bite the top off the Tim Tam and you bite the bottom off the Tim Tam. And then you get a glass of warm milk and you put the Tim Tam in and use it as a straw to suck up the warm milk through the middle of the cookie. And it makes the chocolate all melt and crumble as you're sucking it up. Ooh. Oh, that sounds so good. I don't like chocolate, but they are going to try this. <laughs> Lori, I like she's honest. I don't like chocolate. But I'll tell you, I ate like half of those before we left. They're so good. And then that cherry ripe, cherry, whatever that was. Cherry that ripe, was. yeah. Oh. My gosh, I grew up with all those. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. Know. That's so good. Well, Australia is on our bucket list, has been on our bucket list. We were trying to plan a trip and then everything went crazy a year and a half ago. So yeah. hopefully we can get out there soon. We really can't wait. But until then, we have this movie to watch, right? Yeah. And, and can I ask, is. can I ask you guys one question? Who was, yeah. your favorite, who did you like the most in, who was your favorite character so oh, far? Snake. The snake was yours? The snake, Maddie? Yeah. yeah. I like the spider. I think the spider. Is <laughs> <cool>. <laughs> like Frank. That's lovely to hear, though. I'm and, uh, yeah. Saying that I like spiders says a lot, doesn't it? Because I hate. <laughs> I spiders. think I like snakes. Says a lot. It's true. <laughs> so you guys did great. You made oh, right. scary That's creatures great. cute and adorable, and made us like them, which is weird. Yeah. Feels weird. <laughs> <laughs> but uh thank you guys so much for taking the time today we really thank appreciate you. it and thank, thank you for this you. movie we we can't wait to see the rest of it yeah. thank you so much it thank you thank you so much. Thank you. second it comes out i'm going on netflix and watching it there you go Perfect. <laughs> good, <laughs> good. <laughs> thank you thank you so much to all of my monetary supporters my members here on youtube as well as my patrons if you haven't joined yet please consider doing so we have some really awesome perks including a monthly zoom meeting where we get to talk face to face. Thank you again to everyone who supports me.